Hey everyone, Kelly here. I am extremely excited to talk about what I will be talking about today. So before I get into it, please like and subscribe if you like the content I am bringing you. And without further ado, let's get right on into the Shadow and Bone TV series on Netflix. I am new to booktube, but in my very first video, I mentioned that I am an actor, I'm a performer. So I was really interested in giving you some film, TV reviews or critiques, as well as book content, bookish content. <laughs> When they announced Shadow and Bone coming to Netflix, I was really excited, but I was also a little nervous because, you know, we've all seen adaptations go a little wonky, right? We always have high hopes, but we don't know if we're going to meet them, right? I am so happy to say that my expectations were met, okay? I, I'm going to go into a few different things. I want to touch on the setting and atmosphere, the actors and the characters themselves. I want to talk about some behind the scenes info that I've really loved and I hope that you will also enjoy. And I also want to talk about some fight stuff. So, and I will also give my overall experience and rating of sorts at the very end of this video. So I'll put the timestamps below if you wanna zip around and move back and forth, but let's get started. So like I said, I had really high expectations and my expectations were met, if not exceeded, okay? Oh my God. <laughs> First of all, the trailer looked amazing. When I saw the trailer, I thought, okay, this will probably be really good because the budget looks crazy high. And unfortunately, a lot of the times you need a crazy big budget to bring these otherworldly worlds to life. Because if you don't have that budget, it looks crafty. And we don't want this to look crafty or made from home, you know, I don't know. We wanted this to be glossy. This was glossy and then some, okay? So when I was watching it, I didn't even look up anything, okay? I saw the trailer, that was it. I didn't want to look up extra info. I didn't want to get teasers, no. I started watching and <laughs> I got a lot of Tolstoy or Pushkin vibes, so like Leo Tolstoy and Alexander Pushkin and Russian Revolution, mid 1800s kind of vibes with the Grisha, um, Keftas and the world in Ravka and West Ravka. The army camps. Wow. Okay. I, I cannot get over the world building in this show. It is so luxurious and nuanced. Just so many small details. I was blown away because this is a Netflix show. Okay. What I saw was reminiscent of an HBO show because normally HBO has crazy, crazy budgets. And we're, I'm thinking of Game of Thrones, where Game of Thrones was everything, okay? They had everything at their disposal and you could tell. And speaking of Game of Thrones, I was really curious what the critics thought of Shadow and Bone versus Game of Thrones. So I looked up the Rotten Tomatoes critic and audience score for season one of Game of Thrones and the score for Shadow and Bone season one, because that's all there is so far. And Shadow and Bone had 1% higher. So I thought that was very interesting, especially since this is a YA fantasy written by a woman. So props to Lee Bardugo and this amazing team of creators who I will get into later on in the video. Like I was saying, the level of detail in the setting and the world building in this show was just incredible, super complex, super nuanced. There were so many elements that I remember thinking about in the books and then seeing them on the screen was just so satisfying. The skiffs looked just like I imagined them. The Volcro were amazing. The fold, oh my God. The special effects, Sure, some of them could have maybe been a little bit cleaner, but all in all, I I loved it. I thought it was incredible. The fold was exactly what I pictured. I loved the under the sea sort of feel, but then you had the thunder coming through and the lightning. Oh my God, it was just, just such a spectacle. And this is the type of show that you need a spectacle. Just, oh my God, it was just so 
good. It was just so interesting to look at, even if you didn't know the show or if you didn't know the material, the source material behind the show, it was just so interesting to watch. And actually I watched it with my husband. He hasn't read any of the Grisha verse and he was like, this is really good. And I was like, thank you, you know, thank you, <laughs> okay? So before I move on to the actors and characters of the show, I wanna quickly highlight the set design and decoration was phenomenal. I could not get over all the tiny little details, whether it was, you know, papers lying around in a room or the candles, the, the stuff in the army camps, just wow. You could tell that a lot of care was taken and nothing was just there because nothing looked empty. It looked like a world that was really being lived in, okay? If that makes any sense. And I come from a theater background, so, you know, a lot of the times you don't have a budget for a lot of set dressing. In film, it's a little different because if you don't have it, it looks really sparse. And this was just so rich, just so much oh, in the set it was just beautiful. So the set decoration for the entire series was done by these few very talented individuals, and I will link them below in the description for more info. Now, I cannot go forward until I talk about the incredible costume design. The keftas, ooh, they just, oh, they looked so luxurious and thick and sturdy, like that is a coat, okay? You know what I'm talking about? Like you go to get a Halloween costume and you're like, oh wow, I'm gonna be like this really intricate character. And then you get the costume, it's like some cheap flimsy nylon crap. Oh my God, these costumes did not look cheap. They looked so good. The detail, I'm telling you, the detail in this show was incredible and I mean, I am so glad. I can't imagine being Lee Bardugo and giving away this huge part of yourself. And yes, she was an executive producer, but you're giving away a lot of control. And the, the costumes were just so beautiful. Oh God, the costumes were done by Wendy Partridge. And this is not her first rodeo, okay? <laughs> she has done many projects. And some of her most notable projects were Hellboy from 2004, Pompeii and Thor The Dark World. So, you know, she has done this many times. She is very good at her job and props to Wendy or costumes to Wendy, <laughs> I guess she would say, because they were beautiful. Everything from the Six of Crows characters and this Dickensian kind of Victorian vibe, industrial revolution vibe to the Russian revolution, mid 1800s of the Grisha and the Ravkins. Oh my God, the Fierdins just, so many different cultures and backgrounds to draw inspiration from and the costumes were beautiful. I I can't get enough of it. Beautiful. I am so excited to see all the Halloween costumes that are going to come from this <laughs> because, I mean, they're going to try to emulate what you did. They probably won't come close. Maybe some cosplayers who are very talented, but like the stores are not going to know what to do with themselves because they are just the costumes were beautiful. So thank you, Wendy Partridge. <laughs> now getting into some of the actors and the characters that they portrayed. I, as an actor, <laughs> I can be a little critical of people's performances. Sorry, what are you gonna do? You have to have a critical eye, okay? I really enjoyed everyone's performances. I thought there were a couple moments that were a little cheesy, but I don't know if it was so much their performance or if it was just their performance coupled with the music that was being played on top of it. So there were a couple small sections of Mal and Alina where I was like, mm, this is a little, a little cheesy, but it makes sense. It just, it worked so well. So I don't even think it's anything against the two actors. Um, Jesse May Lee was Alina Starkov and Archie Renault was Mal, Malian Aretsev. And they did really well. The chemistry was so nice, like great friendship camaraderie with a little little extra something. And I am honestly very curious if the show had an intimacy coach or director, because I know that Bridgerton did, and a lot of people were like floored that there was even a thing called an intimacy director. Well, people in theater are not surprised because this is a newer profession, but it is a very, very niche and very important 
person to have on your team because you know a lot of us have been in a lot of productions or shows or been on sets where there isn't any intimacy coaching or any behind the scenes work done on that and it really makes a difference it makes it safe for everyone it makes it comfortable and it helps you tell that story even better than with it, than if you didn't have that coach there so i'm really curious to see if this show had an intimacy director because the chemistry with all the actors was really good there was there was and i don't even mean just romantic chemistry or sexual chemistry there was like no i mean you know there's flirting there's whatever but there's no sex scenes in this okay but the chemistry between actors is very important and having that coach or director makes a huge difference and everyone seemed to be on the same level there was a great sense of camaraderie of connection between everyone so i'm really curious about that if, if you know let me know because i've been researching but i haven't found that yet so let me know standout performances for me <laughs> has to be kit young who played jesper jesper oh my god <laughs> kit young did an amazing job he really he it was it was like I was reading the book. It was just perfection. Everything he did, whether it was, you know, gunslinger kind of moves, which fun fact, the actor actually did some training with guns and doing tricks like that. So he's doing most of the gun tricks that you see in the show, which I thought was just great. It just adds such it adds another layer to your performance where you don't have to pause and let CGI take over and then come back in. You can just stay in the moment the whole time and I loved it. Another similar bit of trivia is Freddie Carter, who played Kaz Brecker, actually learned some sleight of hand so that he could better connect to Kaz. And I, I love hearing that stuff. I just think whatever you can do as an actor to get closer to the role you are trying to bring to life, the better it's going to come off, whether it's stage, film, TV, it's going to add to the performance. So love that. Amita Suman, who played Inej. Oh God, I cannot wait for season two because she was amazing. I loved the way they shot her sneaking around and being the wraith. You know, everyone calls her the wraith. She's super stealthy. There's this one part where she's sneaking around and the way it was shot was just so much fun. I felt like I was a little kid playing hide and seek and I was like, oh my God, is she gonna be caught? Is she gonna be caught? It was just so smooth. It was just so, so well done. She was very grounded because Inej is very grounded in her beliefs and her morals. And I thought she did a fantastic job. I can't wait to see her do more in the next season. Ben Barnes playing General Kerrigan, or Kerrigan, sorry. Wow, Ben Barnes, I mean, Ben Barnes just, Wow, what else can I say? <laughs> he um, he did a good job. He, I didn't really like his character in the book and I didn't understand why so many people were like, oh my God, I love him. No thanks. In the show, I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and full disclosure, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video. I have only read half of the entire Grisha verse, okay? I've read Shadow and Bone, I'm halfway through the sequel, I've read the entire Six of Crows duology. So I'm halfway exactly through the entire Grisha verse. And that's excluding all the extra novellas and um, lore, which I really want to read. Full disclosure, I'm not entirely done reading all of the source material, but I'm well on my way. So I'm definitely going to finish it now after watching this show. Before I move on, I just want to quickly touch on Danielle Galligan, who played Nina and her scene partner Callahan Skogman who played Matthias or Matthias. They were so good together. I know some people were a little not into their storyline. I thought it was great. I was getting Tristan and Isolde vibes from their story. <sighs> wow, it was just so good. I want to say delicious, but that sounds a little creepy, but it was just so Good, oh my God, I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see more, especially because I've read the Six of Crows duology. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> I thought Danielle, who played Nina, she reminded me of a young Kate Winslet, which I'm not mad about. I thought she did fantastic. I also love that they cast a curvy actress to play Nina because that's she was written as that. I thought she was amazing. I thought her attitude was great. 
Again, the connection between her and her scene partner, Callahan. An interesting name. I like it though. Cool. They were great. And I mean, he was something else, okay? <laughs> So, can't wait. And last but not least, I just gotta throw her in because how can I not, okay? Um, <laughs> Bagra was played by Zoe Wanamaker, who was also Madame Hooch in the Harry Potter movies. And I, oh, what just a lovely surprise to see her in this. I thought she did an excellent job. I'm sad that she doesn't have a bigger part in the show because I would just love to keep seeing her, but maybe we will see her, I don't know. I don't know yet, but I really loved her. I just thought overall the performances were incredible. I thought Pekka Rollins was just the right amount of scary and cool. Oh, just so good. I know there's a few characters that we did not get to meet yet, but we will hopefully next season. And I am so excited because I'm sure it's gonna be great. Also, I love the diversity in this cast, okay? Like, thank you you. I'm so excited because I'm tired of the whole it, it won't sell well or whitewashing. Like this was just fantastic. Okay. I, I could just go on and on, but we don't have the time. <laughs> so I loved it. So I already touched on the costume design and the actual designer and the set design and decoration, but I also wanted to go into a little bit of the director and writers. I Wow, I was so, so impressed by the cinematography, which I know is not the director, but I just thought you had some, you could tell that you had experienced people at the helm of this ship, okay? Hi, <laughs> editing Kelly here. So I realized I didn't even talk about the directors of this show, like I said I was going to. So let me just quickly say, um, there were one, two, three, four, five directors for these eight episodes, and they were all, great honestly you can tell this is not their first rodeo we've got Mersey almas who also directed episodes of outlander and jessica jones so i wonder if she did some of the, the episodes with the big fight scenes because wow incredible we have dan lu i hope i'm saying that right who directed some of the walking dead we have jeremy webb who directed downton abbey and the umbrella academy we have Eric Heiserer, who was the main writer, but also, I guess, directed some of the show. And then last but not least, we have Lee Tolland Krieger. Krieger? I will link everyone below because I really hope I'm not <laughs> damaging their career. I'm not. But anyways, <laughs> Lee Tolland Krieger, he directed You, some episodes of You, The Age of Adeline, and some of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So again, Lots of really great directors with different um, backgrounds, different aesthetics, and I think it worked really well. I also wanted to add that this show was extremely fast paced because it's only eight episodes. And for me, I wasn't bothered by it. I thought it was great. I thought you didn't have a moment to get bored. It was just constantly on to the next thing. Fantastic. The main writer was Eric Heiserer, who wrote Arrival and Wow. And I was looking things up about this because I was very curious as to how much input Lee Bardugo had. And this is a spoiler for your review, so I don't want to get too much into the details, but they had a very, very good way of combining Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows seamlessly where it wasn't messing with the original plot lines of both series. I thought it was genius. Honestly, I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, is this The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings? Like, I couldn't believe because personally, like I said in another video, I like Six of Crows better than Shadow and Bone. And I just felt like Shadow and Bone was written for a younger audience, like slightly younger audience. And I was like, okay, it's, I still like it, but I think I like Six of Crows better. And now having seen the show, I'm like, oh my God, is she a genius? Like. <laughs> Is this a The Hobbit versus Lord of the Rings situation where like The Hobbit or Shadow and Bone is more accessible for younger readers and then Six of Crows and Lord of the Rings are a bit more complex with the same world and some of the same characters like and you know it's in the same universe so we know from Lee Bardugo that Shadow and Bone happens two years before the Six of Crows duology so oh my god it was just it's just magical honestly I thought 
they did some amazing things hands down or bow down bow down to eric heiserer and his writing team who i will list all the members of that team down below amazing job i wow i can't i can't imagine being lee bardugo and seeing the final product it's amazing it's incredible like i said earlier watching this show gave me a lot of like leo tolstoy alexander pushkin vibes Anna Karenina, like just the drama and the aesthetic and just, oh, it was just so juicy. Just so many details to dive into. But I found this article from Town & Country of all places <laughs> where they were talking to Lee Bardugo. And I just wanna read a little quote here. She says, I can point to a very specific piece of research that really altered the course of the books. Obviously Ravka is heavily inspired by Tsarist Russia of the mid 1800s. I got that girl, got it. And some of that was simply, it synced up with the themes that were already in my head for this story. A failure to industrialize, the big divide between rich and poor, this army of young conscripts. So yeah, totally got that. And I know from the author's note in Six of Crows, she said she was inspired by Oliver Twist and Charles Dickens. Wow, amazing. Anyways, okay, I need to move on because I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> I can't finish this video without talking about the incredible incredible fight scenes okay <sighs> wow <laughs> i don't like violence i don't like gore if you're like me i think you'll be okay okay so this show is very interesting to me because you have a ya novel that has you know some little romance intrigue action lots of action and the action is done in such a wonderful, natural way. And I find that so interesting because you have the Grisha who are otherworldly, you know, they use the small science or magic, however you want to refer to it. But so you have this fantastical form of violence and fighting. And then you have real life fighting with not real life, more. <laughs> mortal ways of fighting, I guess, with knives, guns, hand-to-hand -hand combat. The fight choreo, the stunt coordination, wow. I, I'm floored, honestly, I am floored, okay? So I had to look this guy up, all right? So the stunt coordinator for the series was Daniel Hernandez, and he has been a stuntman and choreographer for a long time. Some of his notable works where he was the coordinator and not just a stuntman, was um, John Wick Chapter 2, Thor Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, and Birds of Prey. So it makes total sense seeing this because it was just so well done. My God, you see people get hit, you can tell that they actually feel something, okay? It's not just like, ugh, ugh, cartoon kind of fighting. No, you see them get hit, you see them struggle to get up. The the gunfights? Oh my god. I think the, the juxtaposition between the YA content and themes and storytelling mixed with the lush world, the set design, the intense action scenes was just amazing. Because this easily could have been done as, you know, Riverdale or whatever, something light, very young. And this is something for everyone. I mean, I'm not a... <laughs> I'm not super duper young, I'm not old yet. But uh, if I hadn't read these books, I would totally be buying them right now. It is that good. And I think that's why it's getting a slightly better response from critics and audiences than Game of Thrones, the first season anyway. I don't know about the other ones, but we only have one season to go off of. So let's go with the first season of both shows. Game of Thrones, incredibly complex, beautiful world building, rich, lush atmosphere, whether it's costume design, set decoration, action, great. Same with Shadow and Bone. However, Shadow and Bone is a more unique story in my eyes because how many worlds do we have like Game of Thrones, okay? A lot of fantasy or epic fantasy or high fantasy is set in a medieval European, white European sort of landscape. We have a lot of, you know, Robin Hood, we have Lord of the Rings, we have, um, you know, all Game of Thrones, obviously. We have all of those. And then we look at Shadow and Bone or the Grishaverse, there's not a lot that is like the Grishaverse. When I was watching Shadow and Bone, yes, I got Tolstoy, Pushkin vibes, but I also got Lovecraft because of the fold and the monsters. Oh, it was just so good. 
I can't get enough of it. Overall, to end this video, like I've said countless times, I thought this was an amazing adaptation. I am so proud of all the work that was done on this. I don't even have a part in it, you know what I mean? I'm just reading it and I just feel so happy for everybody involved. I thought everything worked so well together. I cannot wait for season two. You know it's going to be picked up. How can it not be picked up? It is going to be picked up. It is already like trending, trending. These actors, I hope their careers take off because they were just so good. Just so good. My god. I am so happy for them. I loved it. There weren't many things I didn't like and that's why this video is very positive because I was just blown away, okay? I don't know if they had a squalor in my house, but <laughs> I was blown away, all right? Um, if I had to give it a rating out of 10, I'd probably give it a nine, honestly. It was that good for me. I went in hoping for the best and I got some of the best. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm pretty critical. I'm <laughs> very surprised. So I think that's about it for me because I want to get this up as soon as I can. If you're interested in a possible spoiler full review, let me know and I will get that out to you because there is so much I would love to go into detail about specific moments between actors and oh, I can't wait. But yeah, so like and subscribe if you liked this video. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I hope you're having a great day. If you haven't watched the show, get on it right now, okay? You won't be disappointed. If you are, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can chat. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.